this week is a special week for Radio Dead Air for What the Fuck is Wrong with You. Because it's our last What the Fuck is Wrong with You of 2016, which means <gasps> it's time for the rectal spective. Yes. For That Doesn't Go There 2016, where we take a look back at the reports from the ER and across isn't that the country. And for 2016. Yeah. The rectal Just spective, yeah. Getting fucked up the ass with stuff you're not supposed to. Yeah, we're going to look back at reports from ERs across the country for the most awful things that have gone in people's butts. But right now, we still have other very, very stupid news. <laughs> because that's just how we roll. That's All what we do. All right. Where is our intro? Where is the intro? Come to me, intro. Come to me. Come to butthead. All right, here we are. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And we're going to start in Russia tonight. I'm crazy for is that like by law yet? Not, not a law yet, but you know, January, January 20th is coming. Um, this is one of those cases of, and I was talking about this earlier when I was talking about romantic comedies and how they're inherently kind of creepy. Um, oh, and we got Vidya. Uh, you know, you ever know, have you seen the romantic comedies where the guy will do an incredibly outlandish, stupid fucking thing and the movie's like, oh, that was the best idea you ever had even though it was highly illegal and could have gotten people killed and now you're in love. Like, break up a chick's wedding, stalk her in various ways, and frame her for a crime so she has to talk to you. And in this particular case, come on, play. In this particular case, aw, it's not working. God damn it. All right, well, we'll do it without the video. Um, in this particular case, Drive drunk through a fucking airport. Oh. Ba da 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 Sorry. Um This is from Russia. A drunk man tried to get away from pursuing police by driving his car through an airport ter terminal in the Russian city of Kazan. Dashboard footage and closed caption television uh, show police chasing a car in heavy snow. The car then veers through airport doors and drives around a luggage belt. Reports say the driver had knocked down a barrier to the airport car park. <laughs> airport officials say an intoxicated man had rammed through the terminal doors late on Wednesday and drove around inside the international terminal. Um, Security's not going to get less strict at the airport. 40 year old Ruslan Nerd. Uh, Nerd. Nerdinoff? Nerdinoff. Nerdinoff. Ruslan Nerdinoff, who told a court hearing he had planned his route carefully, quote, I had to get to on the platform. I was fighting for love. Nerdinoff um, said his lady uh. friend was arriving at the railway platform, and this was his way to greet her. Officials say no one was hurt in the incident. So is he picking up a chick at the airport? Because don't pick her up in a cop car unless you're a cop. And don't be late because you're in jail. I did and, uh, and drunk and drunk. I, I'm sure drunk did not. This is. When you get drunk, you think the worst ideas are the best ideas. See, but when I'm sober, I think the worst ideas are the best ideas. When I'm drunk, I just get more likely to put them into action. Actually, when I'm drunk, I start stealing people's shit. Yeah. When I'm drunk, I take shit. Just be warned. Hold on to your valuables if I've had a few whatevers, because I steal shit. Okay. I probably won't drive drunk through the airport, though. Yeah, it's... 
how how is this going to work out? You know, you drive through an airport, knocking shit over. The police are on your tail. You show up at the at the gate, and and what do you expect? No, I've had the time of my. It's not going to be that. Pretty much, yeah. That's what he expects. Can you imagine him just sitting there going, the soundtrack's going to kick in any second now. He expects to be like, but but I'm doing it for love. And the cops to be like, oh, please allow us to escort you the rest of the way. Bullshit. Would you like to use our bullhorn for your proclamation? Bullshit. That doesn't happen. Not how life goes. There's no, there's nothing about how the woman felt about, but, but I'm sure she's, she's. Remember, God damn it. Women don't have, we're not people. <laughs> we don't have feelings. We're just incubators for a vagina. I look forward to your comments about my feminist bullshit. I just, it, it uh, well, it's time for some holiday cheer from Sri Lanka. Um, this is one of those get a proofreader moments. Oh dear. Um, so there was a Christmas carol service in the Sri Lankan capital of Colombo. And uh, to get everybody on board for this, they printed out the lyrics to many Christmas carols. Like you do. Including Hail Mary. They just Is print a Christmas carol called Hail Mary. I, I don't. Ave Maria. Uh, the Ave Maria. Yeah, I, I think. Well, they went for one called Hail Mary, which okay. was not what they were looking for. It quite exactly. Um. Hi. Christmas service accidentally prints words to Tupac's Hail Mary instead of Carol. <laughs> really? Mix-up occurred at the 2016 Catholic Joy to the World Festival at the city's Nelam Pukana Theater during one of Sri Lanka's largest Christmas celebrations earlier this month. Instead of finding the words, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, the Carol singers were invited to reflect on the 1997 themes of mortality, violence, and sex, and whether they wanted to ride or die. Can you just picture the nice little church ladies in their fancy hats? Because on Christmas, everybody wears their fancy hats. Like, just singing along and getting halfway through before... This doesn't seem right. Oh. Uh, this doesn't seem like Jesus. Some of the lyrics include... I ain't no killer, but don't push me. Revenge is like the sweetest joy next to getting pussy. Picture paragraphs unloaded, wise words being quoted, peeped the weakness in the rap game, and so did. All right, never mind. That sounds just like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and somewhere MIA is fucking furious because she's actually Sri Lankan. <laughs> She's like, if you were going to put fucking rap lyrics in a church thing in Sri Lanka, they should have been mine, motherfuckers. I'm just, I'm imagining an entire room of people in Sri, Sri Lanka going, now Jesus. you want to ride or die. La, da, 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 la, 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 la. Yeah, just I'm singing this to the pipe organ. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Kill up, but don't push me. <laughs> nice for the kids. The it's nice they're doing that outreach to the youth. The crazy spruce in the channel. Spruce in the channel goes. That's some Old Testament shit right there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I ain't a killer, but don't push me. Kind of is Old Testament God. That is true. That is true. So... That that is true. You know, Tupac. Although still Jesus love you. coming along is supposed to signify that Old Testament God got on the right meds and became New Testament God. So, oh, moving on. There are there are some things that we give as gifts over the Christmas season that are that are a little bit personalized. Sometimes you give stuff that you make yourself. Sometimes you give family antiques. So maybe you found a thrift shop. These are usually well-meaning gifts. Last that, year, I gave my sister monogrammed cloth napkins. You know, after Thanksgiving, I'm amazed you didn't give her one of these for Christmas. Because um, she's the kind of person that'll use monogrammed cloth napkins. She really, she's fancy. 
She fancy. Man surprised to learn device he's been using to smash walnuts for 25 years is actually a hand grenade. Oh. One Shanxi man was shocked to learn recently that his trusted nutcracker was actually a hand grenade. I assume it wasn't live because he's been whacking it on shit for years. <laughs> the man's surname, Rod, from Ungang City, told local reporters he had been using this device regularly for the past 25 years to crack open walnuts. However, earlier this month, he decided to stop using it after reading a safety leaflet about explosives that clued him into the true nature of this tool. Uh, he said he'd received the nutcracker as a gift back in 1991, we didn't say what kind friend had given him the device. Yeah, that person's not your friend. That's not your friend. Like, fun is that your friend? That is not your friend. Like, yeah, it's a nutcracker. You gotta hit him real hard. <laughs> somebody was trying... Somebody was trying to kill his ass. Yeah. And can you imagine how annoyed that guy was that he didn't die? He is one with the force and the force is with him. Can you imagine? So, if you've been using that nutcracker, oh yeah, I've been using it for a week yeah, now. Yeah, it's great. Really? Really? Yeah, I love it. It's the best gift you ever gave me. And that's totally, this person's totally like, God, he's that asshole that just pretends to use the thing you gave him because he's alive. This is like one of the, I can picture this as almost a Wile E. Coyote moment. You remember because the, the, the Roadrunner would constantly get the bird seed from the yeah. elaborate traps and then the, the coyote would come over and fuck with and the spring the trap. Yeah. I could just imagine the guy, the guy going, no, 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 you have to hit him like this. <laughs> That's not your friend. Although I feel compelled to point out, when I first loaded this before I read the headline, I thought he'd been using a dildo as a nutcracker. <laughs> like, That's not a dildo, Tara. That is not a dildo. I don't know if you're familiar with the type of grade, grenade, Dan, that looks like a dildo. But this grenade looks like a dildo. That's not a dildo. How does that look like a dildo? Maybe a vibrator. Maybe it looks like a vibe. I can see that. Right, you not know, the a particularly realistic. Oh, yeah, it's a German grenade. Oh, well, that explains it, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. German porn. German <laughs> that tells you everything you need to know. That, that it, To your comments. To me, it looks like a back massager, but you know. Yeah. Anything can be a dildo. Well, we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. We get in there. Uh, next up, we were speaking about Star Wars. Um... This, this is, God damn it! why you gotta do this, people? Why you gotta do this? Why you gotta ruin all, why you gotta ruin everything? This motherfucker, this motherfucker right here. Chewbacca is collared by police force. Costume man busted after making Wookiee error. Wookiee's not an adjective. It's a pun. But it's not a good one. <laughs> sound like an ad adjective that exists. It's supposed to be rookie. It sounds oh. like wookie. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's, that's a reach. <sighs> Former employee of a Florida vending machine company dressed up in a Chewbacca costume and stole money from a pair of kiosks he previously maintained. According to investigators, Dar Darren Pickram, 56, 56 years old, took a total of $623 of a pair of vending machines operated by Florida Fresh Vending. Um, the defendant was observed on video entering the above locations in a Chewbacca costume. Pickram was terminated by the vending machine company two months ago. And while he knew enough to wear a disguise, Pickram inexplicably allowed cameras to get a shot of his face as he entered the building containing the vending machines. He didn't wear the mask all the way in? Not until he, yo, know, not until he got actually inside. Well, that kind of defeats the purpose. A witness identified Pickram with 100% certainty since she saw him on a daily basis for two years. Here's the thing, though. Good choice of costume. Why? Because Han and Chewie were criminals. But no. But yes. Don't do this. Don't don't. They would totally have robbed fucking vending machines. No, they don't. They had to. No, they were they were better class of criminal than this. They thought bigger than, yes, they thought bigger than knocking over some vending machines. When you gotta eat, 
you'll take a fucking Snickers out of a vending machine if that's what you got to do. And also, Han Solo is a man who does what he got to do. Also, I want to note, for one thing, he he got $623 from this. Uh, cosplayers out there, how much does a Chewbacca costume cost? A good one? I don't know. Probably a lot. So, what were you doing? Knocking over the vending machine to pay back the people who made your Chewbacca costume? So you could rob the vending machines? Are we pretending? To pay back? Are we really pretending he didn't already have it? That's a fair point. We're really pretending the inside isn't sticky. That's a fair point. And f <laughs> and, fi and also, number two, he was released on $2,000 bond. So you went through all of this. <laughs> you off your bail. All of this for $623. Oh, that's so sad. For a crime, you get 2000 Oh my god, everybody in the chat's like, actually, they were smugglers, not the- Shut up! <laughs> Look, I realized that they often violated the prime directive of the Federation, <laughs> but I'm not really worried about how. You, you remember the- They had to shoot that guy Greedo because he shot at them first. You remember, uh, was it Finding, uh, Finding Nemo? Yes. Remember that? Mine? 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 Yeah, seagulls? I have those, I have yeah. those seagulls, except they're cats. You, you, every time this, this sort of thing happens, I just, I, all I think is, well, actually, well, actually, actually well, actually, actually, to be fair, to be fair, well, actually, to be fair, well, actually, well, actually, to be fair. Now they're mad at me for the greed. I know Han shot first, that's why I'm fucking with you. Well, actually, devil's advocate. Well, actually, to be fair, to I be guess. fair. Oh, next up, assholes on airplanes. God damn it. Look, I don't like flying. Not that I don't enjoy the experience. I just don't enjoy the surroundings of the experience. I don't Having... enjoy the experience. I don't enjoy being off the ground. I like looking out the window. I think it's pretty. Like it's neat. on the ground. But being closed in with all these strangers, packed in like sardines, and dealing with all the rigmarole and the security and all the bullshit, I can understand. It's a stressful bit of bullshit. And you want to take it out on somebody. I get that. But when you, t all of these people around you feel exactly the same way you do. They are innocent in all this. Hence, don't do shit like this. <laughs> Virgin flight delayed by Galaxy Note Wi-Fi hoax. Flight in America was delayed and almost diverted Tuesday after a passenger changed the name of their Wi-Fi device to Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Samsung Galaxy Way to Note. ruin everybody's day. Samsung Galaxy Note 7 phones were banned from planes by the U.S. Department of Transportation after several of the devices caught fire. Um, oh God, do I really have to read this name? Guys, what are you doing? Oh, this this is a this is a challenge name here. Lucas. Lucas Wojcicki. Wojcicki. I did it. Lucas Wojcikowski, what? I did the first time. Lucas Wojcikowski was on a Virgin American flight 538 from San Francisco to Boston. Told BBC News he photographed the hotspot after noticing it when he opened his laptop. Call went out for any passenger with a Note 7 to press their call button. He subsequently tweeted the crew's announcement from the late night flight after the pilot warned passengers they would have to make an emergency landing. This isn't a joke. We're going to turn on the lights and search everyone's bag until we find it. The owner eventually came forward confessing there was no Galaxy Note 7, but he had changed the name of their SSID wireless device to Galaxy Note 7. Why? Why would you do this? To it's not be, funny. well, he thought he was funny. He's one of those guys. He's one of those people who tell a really mean-spirited joke and starts laughing at it himself and doesn't understand why no one else in the room is laughing. Yeah, and then it's like, why are you so sensitive? I'm just joking. Yeah. yeah. Now, admittedly, the the hysteria around the Galaxy Note 7 is a little overblown. These are defective devices. 
They can catch on fire, but it's not guaranteed. So treating them like they are fucking bombs is a little... I don't know. I feel like if something can spontaneously explode, that's good enough reason for me to not want it around me. Fair enough. All right, fair enough. I don't think that's overreacting. If you hand me, say, a grenade, I'm not going to whack it on stuff. I, I, I don't think it's unfair to not want things that might explode around me. Especially in, a, in an airplane, which is an enclosed in, in an explo- tube. In an enclosed pressurized tube 35,000 fucking feet above the earth. I don't yeah. Care. But this is this. And they had to cancel the flight. They had to move everybody's itineraries around. They had to find new gates for everybody. <sighs> did they let every did they make him walk down the aisle and let everybody punch him in the nuts on his way off the plane? Wouldn't that be justice if they, they could allow have. that sort of thing? Yeah. They should have made him exit the plane the longest path possible and given everybody free nut, shat, nut shots. I don't understand why everybody's so mad. It was just a joke. It was funny. You're supposed to laugh. No. Don't fuck with the TSA. And you just, this is the kind of asshole who, once they do that shit, will spend the next two hours defending what they've done. Being like, yeah, okay, that's fair. But this was still funny. It was a joke. This is my freedom yeah. of speech. Let me let me explain to you why it's funny. I I have prepared a dissertation in seven parts with footnotes on why it's funny and you're just no fun. Yeah. yeah. Finally this week we have more airport hijinks, but this is this is less the uh the quiet explainy asshole and more the Jesus fucking Christ what the hell happened here kind of asshole. I am. This is this is kind of fantastic and awful and yet fantastic. <laughs> so much of what we do. Canadian passenger <laughs> removes pants, hijacks luggage tug, drives across tarmac. There is a story here. I feel like once the words removes pants are involved, the <laughs> shouldn't be involved. <laughs> That's just me. Canadian man was arrested Friday after driving a baggage towing vehicle across the tarmac at Orlando International Airport. Richard uh, Ho, I think that's Ho. Richard Ho, 27, was kicked off a United Airlines flight to Chicago for sitting in an unassigned seat in first class, claiming to be a pilot. So we're starting off, he's already a dick. Yeah. Um, Investigators say Ho then got into an elevator designated for airport airport employees. Employee asked Ho to get off the elevator because he wasn't badged and reported it immediately to security. Officer so <laughs> officer said Ho Officer said Ho went to the ground floor, took off his pants, and then jumped on the luggage truck. Officials say that while on the, the tarmac, Ho appro- approached an occupied luggage tug, and when the driver stepped down to challenge him, he got on the tug. Drove it across a taxiway with airfield operations staff following him, leading to the central fire station where airport firefighters subdued him and held him until Orlando police took him into custody. The incident caused a ground hold for jetliners in the immediate area, but didn't cause any flight delays. It's charged with grand theft and trespassing. What the fuck? What happened here? I have no idea. We start off trying to hide, trying to take a first class seat and mm. lying and saying, I'm a pilot. And then getting your ass kicked off the plane because they will do that. This isn't not catch me if you can. No. You are not Leonardo DiCaprio. Airplane people do not fuck around in this day and age. No. Y'all gotta learn. It's not the bus. And- but then immediately after this, well, I don't understand if he just wanted to be like, I'll show you or what? I th- This sounds like a bit of petty revenge. Yeah. But I don't understand. What, I'm with you. Why did the pants come off? Yeah. Wait, I mean, Orlando's warm. I don't know how warm it is now. Yeah, but was it like, I can't do this unless the world sees my Spider-Man underoos? Was he getting into his superhero costume, per, ch- per chance? Maybe. Asshole man. Maybe he was like, you don't understand. I'm trying to save you from Ultron. 
You know, at least when the Avengers fought on an airport tarmac, everybody kept their pants on. That's true. Everybody. Even the guy who drove three fucking stories tall still managed to keep his pants on. Even Tony, and that's fucking saying something. Yeah, Tony, it's amazing if Tony goes 10 minutes without his pants coming off. That's... So, I... It just... And then to steal... The... While with his... I've just imagined the poor bastard driving the luggage cart, seeing this guy in his underwear coming up with... Give me my... my, my. And I ain't paid enough for this like shit. Canadian, so you know the whole time he was like, sorry, eh? Sorry, <laughs> sorry eh? Oh, sorry, eh? It's a little warm out here, isn't it? May, I mean, maybe that's what it is. Is He's Canadian, and this is in Florida, and he was just like, I can't. It's too fucking hot here. Because Orlando... Is it is it possible just being in Florida You're ruins just everything? And sticky all the time in Orlando. I don't know how people live there. Is is it possible just being in Orlando ruins everything? Being in Florida ruins everyone. I don't know. We spent a week in Orlando, and neither of us went on a pantless rampage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Hello. laughs> I know of. <laughs> but. I will say, for most of the time we were there, I was kind of miserable because my hair was frizzy and I was sticky. <laughs> It'll do things to you, man. Just, it, motherfucker. So, go to what have we learned this week? What have we learned this week that, that, um, if you can't get your way, if you try to be a deceptive shit, there are consequences. Yes, there are. Tantrums will not alleviate those consequences. No. No. And we have created a society where we teach you that tantrums do. Because if you go into any Starbucks or any mall and you throw a fucking fit, you'll get a gift card and your shit refunded. So in some way, that is society's fault at large. Because we have created this mentality in people that if they just shout enough, they will get their way. That's how but you get... That's not always true. But it is how you get to be president. Um, we've learned this week that just because you think something is funny, context matters. Yeah. Know your fucking audience. Know your audience. Especially when you're trapped in a metal tube with them. We've learned that Chewbacca is a smuggler, not a petty thief. It's a very important distinction. He's never going to get his own Federation star starship that way. We've learned that sometimes your friends will give you gifts. Sometimes your friends just might not like you very much. Yeah. Be suspicious. Be, be suspicious of your friends who are suddenly very generous. I gave Dan for Christmas little cufflinks that are working lighters. He's the thing about cufflinks. He loves cufflinks. So I got him little cufflinks that are little tiny operational Zippo lighters. But I trust that he will use them safely. I know what I'm saying. Because <laughs> my nephew now, every time we visit, greets him with the new bomb he invented. I know. We've, but... we've learned that when you're printing out hymnals, proofreading is imperative. Yeah. Have <laughs> somebody check that shit. And finally, we've learned if it works in a romantic comedy, that does not necessarily mean it will work in the really real world. No, it means it probably will actually get you arrested for harassment in the really real world. Most of the shit that works in romantic comedies will get you thrown in jail. Yeah. Um, with a restraining order. If you end up outside of a woman's house in the middle of the night with a boombox... That's 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 not gonna get you together forever. That that's it's gonna get you the garden hose. That's gonna get you the garden hose. That's jail. Hi, Daddy. Where have you been? You've been making a lot of noise. You guys are thumping around like anything. Well, this is normally where we end, but not this week. Bonus. Bonus time. Yes. Each year, there's a collection of um, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission's database of emergency room visits. And we find out, thanks to um, what formerly Gawker, now Deadspin, um, yeah. Rip Gawker, 
says Gawker. Yeah. Pour one out for Gawker. Well, eh, I'm not entirely. I miss Gawker. Eh, I like Gawker. Eh. I know. Well, uh, Barry Pacheski has every year helpfully assembled a collection. We're going to look through these, some of the, the more amazing things that people have got stuck in their various holes. Welcome to the rectal, welcome to the rectal spective. Welcome to that doesn't go here or <clears throat> that doesn't go there. 2016. Hi. And a one and a two. Here we go. What doesn't go? Let's start with the ear. Ah, uh, the, 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 the thing you wouldn't expect people to be shoving horrible shit into the first hole. Yeah, you yeah. would, because children. Okay, well, not always children. One of these is actually kind of makes sense. Place toilet paper in ear so wouldn't have to hear neighbors. <clears throat> yeah. We've all been next we've all been next door to those neighbors, whether it's the loud music, the fighting, or the fucking. Or all three at the same time. We've all had those neighbors. One of the, it's one of those, those categories. I've been at least two of those, but I won't tell you which two. <laughs> um, let's see. Gasoline! Why? <laughs> like, I know there's that hippie thing, ear candling. I don't really understand it, but even that doesn't involve fucking accelerants. Gasoline! <clears throat> Gaso fucking lean! Like, I know if you have a, I used to get swimmer's ear a lot as a kid and we'd pour peroxide in my ear and leave it for like 10 minutes and then you drain it and it just kind of tickles because it breaks up all the shit. And that was really uncomfortable. Crayon stuck in ear for two weeks. That seems like it would get intolerable really fast. Yeah, it's like, no, nah, I'm gonna put that off. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, I go and have it removed, but I'm having a whole lot of fun doing spirographs with my head. <laughs> this is actually really neat. Sorry. Check I... this shit out. I'm going to put this on Etsy. All I can hear is burnt sienna. <laughs> <laughs> and probably the most incomprehensible one on the ear list. Dog's paw. Well... Was the dog still attached? How do you get? There's no explanation here. Was There's the no content. <laughs> All I'm saying is this guy sitting in the waiting room of the ER with a <laughs> chihuahua, <laughs> just a chihuahua hanging out of his ear, going, "Dude, man, don't ask, don't fucking ask." <laughs> what? You know, you're knocking my mic around. Could we not? The, mic, the sound is very sensitive on this operation. How did you get the, how did you get the dog's paw stuck in your, the dog is probably hating every minute of this. Yeah, the dog hates life right now. And you know what dogs do when they can't get their, their paw out of something? They gnaw at the area. Uh -huh. So that's even double the fun there. How, how that, did that happen? I need to know, like, I really want to know the story <clears> there. <throat> Let's see. Nose. Let's no. move on to the next hole. Um, quote, stuck a raisin up his right nostril. Brother tried to remove with tweezers, but patient moved. <laughs> so I'm seeing two, pe two fucking, these are kids. Two fucking idiots. Two fucking idiot kids. <laughs> Hold still. I'll get it out. No, this will work. This is totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> Plastic snake. Ow. Magnets up each nostril. Oh, man, I hope they were properly charged. Can Could, you even imagine the feeling if they're like trying to pull away from each other? Like repelling one another? Or towards ah! each other. For that matter, uh, pressure on uh, <clears throat> Now, what? No, what was it? You put the one magnet up there, and like, I can't get it out. I'll use another magnet to, to get. get it. <laughs> oh shit! I don't. 
Chunk. Oh, I didn't think this one through. <laughs> Did not think that one through. Um, mini hockey sticks. Sure. How many is mini? Not many enough, apparently. <laughs> and finally, the last one, egg dye tablet. Which means your nose is going to be a fucked up color. Your nose and upper lip. You are going to have them. What, what happens when there's a foreign entity in your nose? Your <clears throat> nose creates mucus to try and heal itself. So your your nose and upper lip are going to be some gorgeous color for like weeks. You are going to have technicolor snot. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Oh, why would you do that? Let's move on to throat. Th so there's some good shit in throat. Accidentally swallowed a pill bottle while taking his medication. How, how do you do that? What? What? I, I'm on a medication I take every day. Never once <laughs> has the bottle ever even touched my mouth. <laughs> it's the next one, though, that gets me. Asthma inhaler. <laughs> Not how it works. I is. <gasps> no, you can't just inhale the entire inhaler. If you jam it down there, it's not like a maintenance program. <laughs> and also that would suck because rescue inhalers, I don't know if you know this, are basically, uh, some of them anyway, are basically chemicalized adrenaline. Because mm -hmm. I used to get anxiety attacks and they gave me a rescue inhaler. So I would like take the inhaler and then for the next half hour have tremors because I was all jacked up. You don't want that in you all the time, man. Plus it tastes horrible. The kid from It was right. Like it does taste like fucking battery acid. Plastic honey filled straw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you, have this is a guy who just not give up. <laughs> it's the problem was here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get this to work! Shouldn't you maybe get a spoon? No! No. I'm gonna make this shit work. <laughs> what? The, why would you do. This is not. It's, duh. Proper tool for the job, people. Playing with a blow dart gun, blew the pin out, hit the wall, flew back into the patient's throat, and he swallowed it. I think that's actually how Aisha Tyler died in Balls of Fury. Because <laughs> that is a movie I've seen. That's a Looney Tune cartoon! That, that, that is a fucking cartoon! <laughs> That's that's the universe or God or whatever you believe in going, you know what? Fuck you. That's what that is. Speaking of fuck you, held down in art class, classmate shoved sequins down throat. What the fuck kind of art class are you in? Needed a performance, apparently. <coughs> you are not fabulous enough. What, are you trying to bedazzle their intestines? Yes. Jesus Christ! The last one. Can, can I read the last one? Have fun. Have fun. <laughs> this is great. The last one has a twist ending. This is a quote. This is yeah, a quote. It's, it's M. Night Shyamalan special here. Eating club sandwich and part of toothpick broke off. He swallowed it. Scratch and throat. Wait for it. Able to finish sandwich. <laughs> Which is, of course, the most pertinent information here. I, I want to tell you, this is from ER Reports. Yeah. This is an official database. They had, I wondered if he sat there, you put down there, I finished that sandwich because that was a good sandwich. I think that's more the ER doc being a little snarky <clears throat> and being like, clearly this was not an emergency. Because he finished the fucking sandwich before he came in. Now we're getting to the other holes. The whole, the yeah, special now holes. We're, now we're getting to the good stuff. These are all places that, oh. Well, this next category in general is, play, is a place, you, 
things shouldn't be stuck in. Yeah, yeah. Unless you are some sort of medical professional, you should not be sticking things in this hole. We're talking about your penis. Carved, carved down piece of domino incised penis inserted domino piece into penis now wants it removed yeah. we did the story about the guys in jail that were doing this do you remember i don't know why you would do penis implants as a diy project i mean i wouldn't mostly because dan screams at me when i try Funny. <laughs> I just don't think this is a good DIY, guys. Like, fine, if you want a lumpy penis and you can't find a doctor to do it for you, mm. maybe just tie marble around it. I don't know. Sandal be a safer way. Sandal buckle. Sandal buckle. How? Oh. Why? Doll shoe! Yeah. Doll shoe. Why? How? Had pebbles stuck in penis while swimming in a lake three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Have you not peed in three weeks? Because I had an ex-husband <clears throat> who regularly got kidney stones. Having any kind of anything in there, I at least as far as I can tell, is fucking excruciating. Pen cap? Pen? <laughs> Three inch straight pin? That's sharp. Oh, and, bless you. And this last one, how? Marble in penis. Cut. Penis trying to get it out. Again, not a DIY. Not. So what I'm thinking happened was he, he got the pen, he got the marble in his penis, decided, hey, wait, I don't want a marble in my penis, and then attempted to get it out all by his lonesome. All right, gentlemen, I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret. You don't generally have orifices that are made to receive. So you might not know this. There's a reason, I don't know if you know this, but tampons have a little string. Yes. There's a reason for that. Because nothing should ever go inside of you mm -mm. without an apparatus for its removal. Nothing should ever go inside of you without a fucking exit strategy. You need an exit strategy, which means you don't stick a marble up there. They make anal beads for a reason. They're a string. You just pull the string. You don't stick stuff up there. You don't have a way to get it back out. But it's all not all men on this one. No, no. Now we move to the vagina. Which is designed to receive, but not these. Three golf ball size bouncy balls. Trace. Six screws. USB adapter. <laughs> did we just have a story a few weeks ago of a guy putting a USB adapter up his dick? We did. Is this his wife? My question is how big is that adapter? Because USB <sighs> adapters aren't that big. That shouldn't be that hard to get out. Uh, sat on top of dollhouse and there was a spiked roof. Yeah, that sounds horrible. Boyfriend stuck bottle in vagina. The cap came off and got stuck. Kill your boyfriend. Kill him. He deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> this quote, placed a bobby pin in vagina, states... She does not know why. Why did you put a bolly pin in your vagina? I don't know. <laughs> Were you trying to do like that cool 90s style with your pubic hair? Small painting kit. <laughs> what does that mean? What the fuck? What does 
that mean? A painting kit. What the? What is the story there? You got a little tiny Bob. Oh, we lost Tara. We're all... Oh, we're losing Tara. What? I'm oh, here. oh, you're back. We lost you for a second there. Like, do you have a little tiny Bob Ross up there? <laughs> Happy little bush. <laughs> Someone's getting a marble oh. in his penis tonight. <laughs> Poss- like this one. What? This is all one entry. Mm -hmm. Pieces of plastic cup, broken crayon, piece of plastic, and straw. That's like a whole Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> all one entry. They pulled that all out of one. Your vagina is not a Sarlacc pit, lady. And possible retained vaginal foreign body using vibrator while intoxicated. I'm not entirely confident what that one means. Time for the last one. This is the everybody. This is this the is the moment you've all been waiting for. This is for everybody can play this part. Everybody. Wrecked him. Damn near killed him. Uh, oh, God. And we open strong. <laughs> this, there's a tale on this first one. Using a vibrator last night, thought was inserting in vagina, interrupted by mom, sat up quickly, inserted in rectum, can't remove. Here's another thing you, you fellows might not know. You'll know the difference between something going in one spot and the other. Mm. You'll know the difference. Exactly, Grady. Grady's nervous. backing you up here. You'll know. You'll know. That's hard to mix up. Wine cork wrapped in paper towels, electrical tape, and a condom. Dildo is not a DIY project either. Unless you have, there are kits you can make where you can like make a cast of your boyfriend's penis and... There's an actual process for that, though. Per wife, patient sat down on a screwdriver and it went up his rectum. Bullshit! Sure it did. Sure it did. I am... You skipped one of my favorites in the category. Which one? Ten broken crayons. And a partridge in a pear tree. Ten. Were you trying to shit tie-dye? <laughs> Oh, some of these I'm going to skip because even this, they're just too much. Um, egg timer. Egg timer. <laughs> Why? Egg timer. Oh, I also enjoy possible shot glass. We're not sure. We won't. It's like Schrodinger's shot glass, I guess. We won't be sure it's a shot glass until it comes out. <laughs> hammer. It does not specify which end of the hammer. It does not also specify whether Nathan filling in is at all involved. Mm. Ice pick and rectum to push hemorrhoids back in. Ah! Ah! What are you thinking? No! Not a DIY. Smiley hand toy from vending machine. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> I can't read it. Mom I can't read it. Rubber hand protruding from rectum. <laughs> go on to do great things that is a, that is the next great comedian of our time because the dedication to that joke that that kid was like this shit's gonna be funny as hell it might hurt do we think that's a joke <coughs>
Do we think we put it up there so that mom would find it? That kid, that kid is some dedication. That kid is committed to sparkle motion. That kid is amazing. De decorative pump, decorative pumpkin. We have officially reached pumpkin spice fucking everything. How do you get a pumpkin up your ass? Pumpkin spice rectal injury. How the fuck do you get a pumpkin up your ass? How did that happen? Bowling pin! <laughs> Holy shit! That's impressive. That is not how you pick up a spare. That no. is not how you pick up a spare. How did you do that? I'm I'm legit impressed. I'm not even laughing now. I'm not that that's a round of applause. Sunshine <laughs> container allegedly intoxicated did not know girlfriend yeah. object. <laughs> Gentlemen, if you, while if while you're drunk and sleeping, your girlfriend is shoving things up your ass, you need a new girlfriend. You need a new girlfriend. You need a new girlfriend. Especially if it's fucking shoe polish. <laughs> this one is not quoted, but it says, all you need know, wife's six inch vibrator. Yeah. Y'all need to have a talk. Mm-hmm. And suddenly your wife knows why she keeps getting UTIs and yeast infections. Baseball! Oh my god! There's no crying in baseball. <laughs> I think there is. <laughs> in that very specific case. How much lube does it take to get a baseball up your ass? They have stitching. It's not smooth. And this last one is the, the definition of walk it off. Male using plastic sex toy vibrator that broke off in rectum, but left without treatment. You've already gone through the humiliation of going to the ER for this problem. And you're going to leave without help. <laughs> Arista about the baseball. No, no lube. Just throw it real hard. <laughs> well, you know, Randy Johnson killed a pigeon with a fastball. Oh, but this, yeah, just, no, no. You don't have to take it out. I'm fine. I just want to know what it was. I, uh, I'm fine. I'll just walk home. I no, sir, you really it. need to. I just wanted to show it to you. Just wanted to show it to you. I'll be fine. No, sir, it really needs it. No, no. Pain don't hurt. Pain don't hurt. That is a, I can see a dildo snapping in half, but a vibrator has like mechanics and batteries inside. <laughs> That's why you need to not clench so much. Don't clench. Like what are your- You gotta relax the anus, don't clench. What are your muscles like down there? Ugh! <laughs> Ugh. Well, that's why he's using the vice. That's why he's using the vibrator because if he actually attempted to have sex with someone, he'd rip their dick off. 